The nation holds its breath. Yes, we're You're listening to the Green Machine, your home for Irish football news and nostalgia, and this is the State of Play. David Dunn here, joined by Martin Prendergast, and on today's programme, we are going to be talking are the FAI, are they going to go after Lee Carsley, European Championship winning Lee Carsley. Also, Martin's been flirting with the ladies over in Tala, who are, and we're going to talk about the latest Irish transfer news. So, let's get into it. Actually, before we do, if you're new to the podcast... You can head over to Facebook, you can head over to Instagram, Twitter, give us a cheeky subscribe over on the YouTube channel. And also, we do have a website, thegreenmachinepodcast.com, thegreenmachinepodcast.com. We have an entire back catalogue, articles and loads of other stuff. It's all very lovely over there. Right, let's get into it. Enough of that bloody music. Martin, how are you doing? Welcome to the State of Play, a maiden episode, another cog in the Green Machine. Yeah. Did Thanks like very that? much for the for the welcome. Yeah, I do. I love the introduction. Well done with that. Uh, first time as well. But um, no, look, I was. <laughs> I am. I am very uh, proud to be on 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 the state of play. And yeah, I was over in Tala. I'm fresh from a, a very enjoyable trip to Tala. I'd never been to the stadium before, so it was nice to see the Irish. Yeah, we to Tala Cup Stadium team. before. No, never been there before. And I call myself an Irish fan. Um, yeah, never been there. So, um, but yeah, it was all right. What uh, do you know? How's the new stand looking? I was last there when we beat Sweden on the tw- uh, on the twenty ones on the twenty ones of twenty nineteen. I actually interviewed Noel Mooney in a restaurant whilst he was eating his dinner. <laughs> right, okay, <laughs> he he was late um, from a UEFA meeting, and yes, basically he was a couple of hours late, and we had to do it. We had a lovely quiet place. Couldn't do it, and then by the time we got there, it was completely drowned out by loads of other people. No, it was, it, I was quite impressed with the stadium. To be honest, it, it was um, yeah, the stands coming along quite well. Good. Loads and loads of kids there, young women as you probably expect following the the women's team going off to the World Cup. But like, I thought it was a you know, despite the result, it was brilliant to see them off off to the World Cup. So yeah, exciting time. We're, we're on the countdown now to the start of the World Cup. So I think there's going to be a big lift and big interest in the nation completely to get behind the girls. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're we're obviously going to be doing a lot of stuff for the World Cup, aren't we? We're going to be doing interviews with certain members of the camp, we hope, and various other bits and pieces. Um, so we will have a bit of coverage for you there. We'll be doing some. Well, it won't be stay to play, will it? No, we just that's just news, and we'll be doing like your your pre match stuff and all that. So it's all very exciting. Ireland's first women's World Cup um, hasn't been without controversy, of course. How do they look? How do they feel? Because obviously, Katie. Um, McCabe, sort of very tongue in cheek, said to the press, "And yeah, cheers for talking about the World Cup, lads." Yeah, I mean, in in the kind of lead up to the to the game against France, it was very much the kind of fallout still with Vera Powell and, and dealing with this kind of athletic uh, article and this investigation in America, which is is mad, really, if you think about it. In the context that Ireland's women's team were in, invited back to play in America and played the double header recently. And yet Vera Powers is, is kind of technically serving a ban from being able to coach there. So that's a bit strange anyway. But yeah, it, it's disappointing. It's just typical Ireland, isn't it? This is overshadowed, in a sense, the preparation for the World Cup. This was the, it's, it's the biggest thing in the women's game that's happened in many, many years, 50 years of the kind of for the women's team, of course. They get a lot of things right, I think, with the women's game um, because there is general interest coming up now and young girls are really getting behind it behind it and yeah just just the level of interest obviously with the world cup we're still falling behind so many other ways but yeah fantastic to see seven and a half thousand near enough in in tala gave him a good send off you know I, I think what i would say is i'm really looking forward to the world cup i'm hopeful that we'll put on a good account of ourselves i think it's an incredibly tough group i, I think as well there is a little bit of unsettlement within the squad in all honesty um i think We've, I think Vera Powell with uh, squad selection has actually rewarded some of the people who got us there, but strangely omitted others who, for example, Jamie Finn got us, got us mm. to that World Cup as well. And she's omitted from the squad. Okay, she has travelled to it. I know we're saying injuries and things like that, but, you know, bringing in some of these young girls now um, who have qualified and they're going to, it's basically a starting lineup. I'm talking like Farrelly and um, 
Carusa as well. Um, you know, we, we're just, you know, I, I think there is this sense by some people who really do follow the Irish women's team that they feel a little bit let down. It's, it's quite a strange thing, um, the Irish followers of the women's game. They seem to follow a player rather than perhaps the team necessarily. They all get behind their favourite player and they have posters up and everything like that. But as I said, at Tala, it was fantastic to see the um, amazing yeah, shame about the results. send off. Shame about the result, Bon. Yeah, I, I just think, though, we, we've, again, to be brutally honest, we've got two or three at most in that starting lineup who mm. are of that proper high class level. And the rest of them are kind of maybe aging a little bit or, or catching up or very young and, and their time will come. Yeah. And I think, you know, we're going to be very resilient. I know Vera Powell keeps using the word, we're going to be very brave. We're not going to be afraid of anybody. And hopefully, you know, momentum of qualifying and the feel-good factor with that will get us results over there. But I think just on a on the level of how competitive football, we're a little bit way off it still with the very top teams. And France are fifth in the world. They're going to be competing to win that. We've got no hope of winning it. But we're realistic to know that. Um, so I hope everyone going over has yeah. Time and I think a lot of the followers as well is brilliant. I met a lot of people there, Katie Milady, who'd been on and done that interview and the fantastic song from Tala to Australia. It was, as well. it was better yeah. than the Come on Ireland or whatever that was. Yeah, again, I mean, I, mean look, I could rant with day about that one to be honest. And I've seen there's another one now been released. I, I just think, again, that, that's one of the, my, my views of how, how we get it so wrong. Um, you know, you've got a young fan base of women engaging coaches you know she, we spoke to katie on the on the mm. podcast and she's you know she's she's very interested in irish football and very nice girl yeah decent ticket holder yeah. and has followed the team she's going over at her own cost to kind of go and follow the girls away uh, the other side of the world and yet no one really from the fai has got behind her or even pushed that kind of song in a sense i was quite disappointed i know we had a little campaign and tried to help push it a little bit but i just think you know you're going to dun stores as well this is very minimal <laughs> This is very strange for me to say this, but like I was trying to pick up some kind of you know knickknacks, basically little things like or, or you know a island shirt with come on the girls and stuff like that. Very little kind of stuff in done stores, and you wouldn't really know apart from the areas where the um, some of the girls are from. You wouldn't really know there's even a World Cup at the moment. And you know the first day the girls flew out from Dublin Airport, obviously press coverage. It was brilliant. You know Denise Sullivan's having the kick around. A lot of fans went out there. But the second day. Basically, it was myself, Dave. You know, whether well, I don't know. To be fair, there was five or six other little <laughs> girls there. Jamie Finn's family were there as well. Yeah, and and they did get a send off as well. I mean, I, I just uh, anyone. I was very lucky enough to kind of meet a few of them around Tala Stadium and then meet them around the hotel a few days later. And I just said to any of them, "Best of luck for the World Cup and enjoy every minute of it because this is." Yeah, I mean, it's an amazing opportunity. Might this, not happen this again. Is the time of their lives, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, it might not happen again. And you know, so I mean, look at the men's team. You haven't. Last World Cup was 21 years ago. His Nick never stops yeah. going on about. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, now, you know, best luck to the girls of green over there. We will be watching. We'll be supporting them. And we will be doing some stuff on there. So do listen up. Across uh, the Green Machine Network. Right. That's the women's. Now we've got to talk about the men's. So uh, last Saturday, uh, the English under-21s, led by former Republic of Ireland midfielder Lee Carsley, uh, they won the under-21s, won every game. And never even conceded the goal. And now the European champions. Uh, Lee Carsley himself, um, 49 years of age, by the way, he will talk to his boss, which is the FA technical director, John McDermott, uh, once he returns from holiday, to discuss his plans. Uh, he's on a one-year rolling contract and is understood to have been approached by clubs during his 10 years under 21's manager. Well, uh, and also uh, one thing as well we, we have to stress is he does play a very, very attractive style of football, as we saw with the England. Played some magnificent stuff. So he, he, his stock has risen, Martin, hasn't it? I mean, he's not just won a championship. He's won it with style, hasn't he? He's won it with substance. I mean, he's won every game. And he's done it without conceding a goal. Even though he had a 96-minute penalty, which was a double save, which was hilarious. I just knew he was going to save. I was watching it. But um, surely the FA, I really... Uh, they just need to go after this guy, shouldn't they? They just need to put him in charge. It's the end for Kenny. I know you and Nick feel that, but, you know, we're, we're in a time of austerity measures here. You're look, trying to get a man sacked. Um, no, I'm joking. Uh, I think, um, look, I think you have to respect the fact that Stephen Kenny's still in the job and the FAI have mm. announced that he's going to be getting the next two games minimum. 
Um, they're not going to sack him on the verge of a World Cup. They're not going to overshadow that. I think it's, you know, we've been talking about, speculating about if Stephen Kenny, why he's still in the job, basically, in some respects, where, you know, we've we've been saying there's not an open candidate there to take the take the reins at the moment. You know, we, who are you going to put in charge, basically? And I think that saved him to some respects. But now there is a very valid candidate. Um, whether the FAI can afford him, whether he wants a job, I know his mates, as, you know, alluded to in the media, you know, um, especially Kevin Kilbana said, you know, I thought it was very interesting, actually. Um, Kazi himself said that he went to the FAI years ago with Kilban and offered their services. And I, I'd heard Kevin Kilban say that before and they just weren't accepted. So fair play. He's gone away and he's done oh, it. Yeah. You know, he, he's done it off his own bat now. And he's got the credentials that very few England managers have had over the years of winning the championship. Um, I think... You know, you just don't know. I mean, the English FA probably won't let him go out the door too easily if they think he's he's brought so much to them and brought success to them. Yeah, can the FAI afford him? I well, don't know, but let, let's just go through his record first of all. The managerial record: he played for the Republic of Ireland between '97 and 2008, 40 caps, no goals, no shock there. If <laughs> you remember him as a player, um, he was caretaker of Coventry twice, uh, 2012 and 13. Uh, he was uh, head of the Brentford. Div- development squad to 2014 to 2015 then he was manager of Brentford in 2015 um didn't pull up any trees I think it was then actually he had a bit of a come to Jesus moment where he was like look I actually think it might have been yeah I think it was Brentford because he said he went to the new camp and he watched he basically coached the way he played which is very defensive minded you know very negative and then he went to the to new camp and I think uh, Guardiola was in charge there and he basically was blown away and thought this is the way I want to play and then he went away and he said right I'm going to start playing a more attractive style of coaching and he actually went to Manchester City and he was the under 20 he was the under 18s manager there actually very highly regarded 2016 to 17 then he went to Birmingham City under 23s in 2017 and then he was Birmingham City caretaker manager uh, for one year there and then he went to England on the 20s and 20 to 21. And now he's the under 21s manager. So he's got quite a decent blend there um, at the underage level and a little bit caretaker. But obviously now, though he has proven, hasn't he? He's gone. He's won a tournament. He's won it with style. He's obviously had Ashley Cole and Joni Lescott um, on his side. Although Joni Lescott is leaving. He is going to become a technical director, I think, somewhere. I read, yeah. That's what he wants to do. Fair enough. But if you're, I know he, he may have gone with Chemical Ban a few years ago. Although, I mean, Kevin Caban hasn't exactly pulled up any trees as a coach. No disrespect to Kevin. I'm just, you know, we're looking at it from a coaching side of things. Um, You know, Lee Carsley, if you're his agent now and you're advising him, Lee Carsley could, would be on the radar for maybe some middle, the top, and championship clubs and maybe some lower Premier League clubs that want to take a punt. Obviously, all the jobs are filled now. Leeds, Southampton, Leicester, they all have new managers. If you're his agent, surely you'd be thinking, don't go to Ireland. That's a step back. Yeah, I, I can understand that that kind of that point completely. Because his stock is probably at its highest now. And is he going to take the leap into club management? You know, he could... It's a little bit like Chris Hewton, in a sense, isn't it? Chris Hewton, mm. when he was with Kerr, you know, we, we all think he was... You know, he was quite relatively young then, you know, when he was an assistant then and things like that. You know, he wasn't what age he is now, obviously. But, it, you know, it's just... You can, you can always come to the senior job later on. You know, like I've said it, I think on here before, Jose Mourinho will be the Portuguese manager. I say that possibly could be his last ever job, you know, trying to crack a World Mm. Cup European Championship, right? So you can always do that. I think Stephen Kenny's relatively young uh, in the context of a manager, in a sense, an international. Um, It it depends on what Lee Carsley wants to do in his career as a manager or coach, because does he want to now have a crack at management in the championship, test himself, or is his stock so high that he can go, well, Ireland... is the Irish job attractive? Is the question really? And I, I think it is. I think it is attractive because I do. I do think it's attractive too. Don't, don't, yeah. don't get me wrong. I'm just. I'm just thinking what his agent would be 
I, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate with the agent. Mm. You know, it is an attractive job. I mean, there's some good players there. Um, three talented young goalkeepers might be playing in a championship. Uh, you've got, you know, a nucleus there of a defence all playing in the Premier League. A couple of, you know, a couple of lads in the championship now. We'll talk about some of those lads have moved during the summer. Uh, the midfield guys. So it's a decent team and, and two of the forwards actually playing in the Premier League. Potentially three if Tom Cannon um, stays with the uh, with the Republic of Ireland. It doesn't go to the under twenty ones. In that aspect, it's an attractive job. But I mean, I have to ask the question, right? I mean, is this not the perfect sort? Like, this is probably the only appointment the FAI are going to be able to make, aren't they? It's going to have to be a young up and coming coach. Yeah, I think so. I think the FAI, if they really want Carsley and they see him as um, an important person in our future of our our association they've got to test his resolve now and they've got mm. to say look we are they've got to put them feelers out and i think that has been happening um and i think you've got to just push for that now and say right we, we actually want you to come in we want you to take this job we know you're a young coach you've done really really well we think you're going to do great things with this team now we've this is what we've spoken about on the podcast before we we often our reservations about kenny were he fast tracks so many he he will we will do really well in future because of that decision of Stephen Kenny fast yeah. and some of those yeah. young players. Is it now an opportunity for someone else to come in and do that? I mean, look, no one is call it knocking on the door trying to get Stephen Kenny from Ireland. Okay, that's just his credentials as a coach. We know he's a League of Ireland man, come through that way, dream job for him. If Lee Carsley was the senior manager of Ireland and we started getting results, every, it'll be a little bit like the Martin O'Neill situation in some respects that you will have Lee Carsey being linked championship lower Premier League jobs if he does well with us, for example, anytime there's a manager sacked because he is the up and coming successful coach that is on the radar of everybody, I would think. Um, but again, it's gonna we've got to test his resolve. The FAI is serious and thinking like Irish fans are all talking about that this is the man perhaps to be able to give him the job. They've got to test his resolve. But also I'd rather then we don't have this speculation all the time. I'd rather Lee Carsey say, look. I'm happy with England under 21s, or no, this is the pathway for me. It's going to be seniors with Gareth Southgate eventually, or I want to go into club management. I want to do that. Then there's no speculation. Mm. But it, it's it's actually probably a bit of an unnerving situation for Stephen Kenny that he's looking over his shoulder now because this is the first candidate who has come forward as a as a manager who so, we would have no worries, would we? I don't think anyone would be have any worries or concern Lee Carsey mm. coming in here. Yeah, I mean, Nick got uh, a bit of abuse, didn't he? Uh, a private message on the green machine. Uh, F you and F Lee Carsley. That's not what he said. Yeah, He used the bad F. He used the F word, Martin. Yes. You know, the bad F word. The one worse than feck. Um, and yeah. we won't say we are trying to be a bit more sort of like um, family friendly here on the, uh, the green machine. The state of play. No swearing allowed on the state of play. Um, but obviously some people were looking at it going, yeah, but but, you know, he's dealing with underage players. He's not dealing with seniors. Well, here's the thing. I think it's perfect. I think he would be the perfect fit. Every manager, he would be a calculated risk. Every manager is a calculated risk because you don't know if he's going to gel, if his, if, if his, um, his modus operandi is going to fit with the players, if the players will get him, etc. cetera. Um, I think they will because he is a former international. Now, he obviously didn't have a very... He didn't have a brilliant career. He was chased. Um, him and Gra for club level, he was excellent. Him and Gravison were, were really, really good together in that Premier League, in that uh, Everton side. But for Ireland, he was chased out of the team, wasn't he? So there might be a little bit of redemption in his mind. You know, if he does uh, feel quite strongly towards the Irish diaspora, I think he'd want to be remem remembered even more fondly uh, with the Ireland team because as a player, he wasn't really. He was chased. He was hounded out. I always remember... Uh, the report when we had to go to Switzerland to get a win to get a playoff for for the 2004 playoff, mm. and you know there was like this five point plan. Can't remember what paper it was, and um, one of them was you know of how we can qualify. One was rip up Lee Carsley's passport. So that's how that was in an Irish paper. Now, now that's how this guy was remembered. And let's you know we don't we don't do that in here. We don't put on the green tinted glass unless. You are about Roy Keane. Um, we talk facts, and that was said about him. And he was hounded out by the press, understand era as well. And he never got a look in on the trap. So he did not have a good 
uh, relationship really as a player never really got over the turkey um in 99 the the playoff the home game against turkey we gave by the penalty i, I don't think anyone really forgave him over that i mean i'm going off on a tangent there but um i think there might be a little bit and it might play in our favor that he might want to come and have a bit of redemption yeah you know the guy that could get us to a tournament i think he could there's some young players there they're very talented you know it's not i you know lean brady said it was our weakest team that he's ever seen i mean you hear that with every uh group that comes through you know i mean nobody can compete we could we'll probably never get a team that strong that he played in on a jack but at the end of the day he's a very very good young team there's a lot of potential there he's worked with young players he's media savvy and uh, he will have the best of training the fa have the best in class in everything so he you know he's used to that the fa i don't have that but you know he's my point is he's he's good stock isn't he, he comes from good um coaching good breeding and he's shown it he's played some really good football and he's won a tournament i think he'd be perfect i think he'd get the most out of those players you get a lot more out of it out of them than stephen kenny um i don't think he has and nick would agree with me on this one i don't want to put words in his mouth but i don't think the manager current guy has to be fair he's brought a lot of young players in but no they're not aggressive too passive too nice and that's you know that's down to coaching that's all coaching and i think he could really really do a job uh for the seniors i know i've gone on from one there and i know you want no no i get your points on it completely and, and i think like it's an interesting point that's a really good argument that you're making for him and, and, and it's convincing to be honest um and i think yeah just the circumstance with kenny is, is a bit unnerving at the moment um because we've got two big games coming up and it, you know even the most positive irish fan which i am as you know um it's going to be very difficult to get results there I think as well, the fact that he's come through the hard way and he's not had everything easy, Carl. I mean, look, he had a fantastic career, over 300 games, I think, in the Premier League. Um, done really, really well as a, um, you know, international as well to play for Ireland and stuff. But I think he did have a sour taste with that whole 2002 thing that, um, you know, he got very few minutes on the pitch. He couldn't even get into that midfield when Roy Keane, who would have been one of the most competitive players against him for that role, wasn't yeah. in the squad as we know um and and i just think that's that left a bit of taste with him and and it, i think it's just interesting you know he, he's not had a easy personal life as well i know i've read a fantastic article of how he is with his son who's got down syndrome and just how that kind of really makes him focus on things and yeah. doesn't really get involved in the bullshit of football and i think he he would be a success Language. Yeah, I think he'd be a success, though. I, I think he would. And, you know, whatever happens, I would love him to do well. You know, I mean, look, I know people will say, oh, what do you want England to win for? I didn't want England to win the under-21s, of course. But, um, you know, it's an Irish man who's got them there. Uh, it's an Irish man who's got them there. And, and you know, we, we've seen arguments as well. So, well, he's not even Irish and stuff like that. Oh, There's a whiff of Sassnet off him. as well. That yeah. was one I Sassnet off him. Yeah. Uh, ridiculous. Before we just wrap this one up here, because this one will be interesting now. Mm. Um, final question have the FAI missed a boat no I don't think so I, I think they should, they'll probably be working in the background to see is it feasible and, and as all these things you know we've got to remember Jonathan Hill you know they're well connected all lives in this, England uh, CEOs <laughs> and stuff yeah you know that, that he surely has been sound out or he'll know that it's not actually feasible at all you know before even asking the question he'll know contractually he'll know look what's the crap oh you're doing really well you know they, they all meet up in these UA for jollies as as we can see how other mm. Irish coaches have got jobs and in all over the world, haven't we? We've got uh, we've got coaches all over the world now. Our Irish lads, you know, Israel and everything, and that's on the back <laughs> of these UA for jollies. So um, <laughs> look at me, shots fired. But um, yeah, I, I think it wouldn't be a bad thing. Um, but I, I, you know, we've we've a long way to go in a sense of of knowing what his plans are. Let him have a bit of glory in the, in the wake of the the victory with England, and I, I'm sure it'll all come out soon. Yeah, no, uh, this will be we, we will be getting back to this because I don't think this is going to go away one way or another. Anyway, we will be discussing that. Nice one, Martin. We're going to move it on uh, to the Irish transfers. It's been a busy old, uh, summer so far. Uh, we've had Nathan Collins to Brentford. He's broken his own record. Good lad. Uh, Daryl O'Shea, he's gone from West Brom to Burnley. Uh, Benny's gone to Luton. Well done. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, you said his surname. What's his first name again? You tell me, Mister. Is it? 
Mr. <laughs> Benny, <laughs> Mr. Ogbeni, <laughs> Mr. Ogbeni to you, Martin. Uh, yes, he's gone to Luton. He's going to be playing in the Premier League. You actually see Luton. They've had to sort of dismantle <laughs> most of their stadium to bring up the scratch. Um, with the Premier League, I think they've got to have like, and rightfully so, they've got to have uh, access, like wheelchair access, that kind of thing. So they're really just ripping it apart. 10 million quid, boom, out of the uh, transfer budget. Um, Ryan Manning has recently just signed for Southampton on a free. Southampton, of course, with a brand new manager there. Uh, he joins Gavin Bazunu. Uh, Jason Knight announced just last night, actually. Uh, he has joined Bristol uh, City. I was actually uh, a mate of mine who's actually from Bristol, and he sent me a text this morning, and he goes, um, this guy, Jason Knight, is any good? Bristol just signed him. I was like, oh, oh, yeah. I said, yeah, he's he's actually a brilliant lad. Uh, he's probably being too generous with Derby. He did obviously go through the uh, academy there, and he's very well thought of. In fact, uh, the the response from the fans, I didn't see one bad comment about Jason. Knight. He also said, great player, great loyalty, fair play to him. He gave us a season in, in League One. We probably shouldn't have. You know, they were all just wishing the best. Great engine. That's what they all kept saying, mm-hmm. engine, engine, engine. And I did say that to you. Um, to Ryan, Ryan, if you're listening, he was there. He was one of the first there, actually, the Genesis of Lanson Road, funny enough. There's a story in, in that one. Yeah, during lockdown. Um, but anyway, and uh, basically, yeah, um, I was telling him, like, this guy, he's a, he's really, really uh, exciting. And, of course, uh, we got Matt Doherty, two Wolves, we don't know. But um, just back on the whole night to Bristol thing, though, uh, League One to Championship, this is a, this is a signing I mean, Bristol, no disrespect to Ryan, he's going to hate me for it. Um, but, you know, Bristol, it's hardly, they hardly have the wow factor. I know your mate, uh, Callum Adele, to play there for a number of years. But um, I think this is just really a stepping stone for Jason Knight, isn't it? Shows what you can do in the championship and then move on, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully that is it. Because, look, you know, I, I, I join you in saying, you know, I didn't read anything negative at all from Derby mm. fans about him. Um, I thought one of the funniest ones was, you know, th- this guy's got the ability to run for 90 minutes and not look as if he's even sweating. Um, he really, though, needs to get into the Ireland team now every every time we play. And to do so, he's got to be playing regular football. And I actually thought he'd done very well in the right wing back position. Well, he got man of the match, didn't he? Yeah. And I think... Left wing back? Left wing back? No, right wing back. Sorry, right, yes. Yeah, yeah. You are correct. And... Um, he um no I, I just think he he brings a lot to us from from you know a player who's adaptable to lots of positions and stuff and that's going to be attractive in the championship as well his his flexibility uh, and I, I I wish him well with it I think it's a really good move for him um, do you think he he's got to a, really do well now do you think he emerges a cousin will in the team has sort of given him a little elbow uh, you need to get out of there because Stephen Kenny mentioned it didn't he, he goes he's got to get out of there and the owners are like what I mean yes, he has to have yeah. something to do with it there. Yeah, he had to. Yeah, I mean, Stephen Kenny and Keith Andrews have spoken enough about you know they've got to be playing regularly now. And I think for all of the faults with Stephen Kenny and the results and stuff so far, I think that he's now got a settled squad in some respects. So I think that's what he's been saying to people: if you're you're part of it basically, but you've got to start playing now. And I think even the the Manning move is a very clever one by him. Um, I'm really intrigued to see how he has. I, well, I think they've strengthened really well at Southampton, and cousin yeah. Will hopefully will be staying there. Um, and I hope that he obviously kicks on there and does really well. And I, I can see them coming straight back up Southampton because they've seemed to have recruited quite well. I'm doing all right. Um, Doherty to Wolves. Now we were talking a bit off air here. Obviously, Collins had to go to Brentford. Uh, he did seem to fall out of favour with the manager Lapategi. That's his name, isn't it, Lapategi? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And now Wolves are faced with a bit of financial fair play. Uh, in fact, a lot of the clubs, um, they were given, well, I think they were given the three year grace period, weren't they? Because of COVID where, okay, your finances can be all out, can be all over the place for three years. But after that three years, you need to so, sort out your finances. Wolves are like, Oh, we're caught here. So don't hurry the wolves. That'd be on a free uh, because he didn't do anything at Atletico Madrid. Uh, that would seem to make sense. What did you make of that one? I thought it was done. It's actually just a rumor. Yeah, it's just a rumor. Again, my worry there is that you kind of he done so well there, but it's 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 like don't go back. In a sense, yeah. he done very well under a, for a reason, take him, didn't though. he? Who else is going to take him though? Martin? Let's be honest. 
No, I, I don't know. He didn't play well for Ireland during the. He hasn't had a really good game for Ireland for a while. Uh, he played 14 minutes in La Liga. I mean, I know, and I'm actually, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it a task on this. You, you had a go on Nick and and and, and, and myself on a live episode. Uh, by the way, the live series does come back on the sixth, <laughs> the sixth of uh, August. Just getting that in there. We're, we will be back live on a Sunday. Um, but you turn around and said, "No, it's a great move for him." And, and Nick, a few people had a go at Nick and I actually, even on Twitter. I said, "Oh, you know, these negative people." Yet he might be going back to Wolves because he only got sixteen minutes of uh, a league yeah, of football. It didn't, it didn't work out for him at. at- Athletic Co Madrid, but you know, he he was he doesn't get put you in a shop window, though, does it? No, but I think he went over there and trained with a elite level club, um, under Simeone, and he he was releasing a free transfer financially. It was a, a good move for him, he'd been released by Spurs, and he, he can go over there and have a crack out of there. Probably take him away from some of the, the heat in a sense that he perhaps was under, I don't know. Um, but yeah, well, you know, he, he, he was a free, he was either going to get signed there, which I know it didn't work out, or He's coming back as a free free agent, and he 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 should have, you know. I'm amazed, and it probably is wages. To be honest, isn't it? Let, let's be honest. It will be wages. He would he, his deal. He's getting everything from it, isn't he? Sign on fee. There's no transfer fee to pay. So it's that package. Who can afford him on that kind of thing? Whereas, and, and I think that is probably mid to lower prem. And he's got to be in the Premier League. He's too good for the Championship. Let's be honest, he is too good for the I, I, I agree there. Like, th- There's a player in there somewhere, but that's the problem, though, isn't it? He's 31. No, he's um, flexible, though, isn't he? Left and right side. He's a very good player. I think uh, underestimated in there. And, and I think it just hasn't worked out. You know, there was a big argument when they were under Mick where, whether he could play Coleman and Doherty. And now, right wing, yeah, yeah, and like, and he and he played very well on the left. I think in Portugal and stuff. So I, I think he's a very flexible player. I, I can't believe that it's just Wolves in for him, but maybe they just know they're going to get a proper solid pro. The money might not be too much in a in a sense with them. Might be a bit of loyalty kind of thing on it, but you know, well, what, it's financial uh, fair play I, as well, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's a great opportunity for him though, and that's why it was a good move for him to get out on a free mm. transfer and try something. And, all right, it didn't work, but. There's other transfers <laughs> where I've seen that haven't worked either. So S- 60, 60 minutes. Yeah, he went. He went out there and he sat on a bench. Yeah, what a, what an adventure! Right? Worst things to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fair enough. But you know, you, you'd imagine when you're in your early thirties, uh, you're not exactly. He, he didn't exactly pull up trees at Tottenham, and then you know. They no, but you could just... think you could be forgiven to thinking it. Like, so I'll, I'll give the Trippier thing. Trippier went out there. He oh. might have thought that was going to work out for him. Because Trippier went out there, and then Trippier was in demand from Man United and, New- and went back to Newcastle. So, you know, it, it does work out some of these loan moves sometimes. Obviously, it didn't work out for him, but that's why I think the context of it. Yeah, he won't be going to a top Premier League team, though, in my opinion. I mean, I hope he does, but it's just, I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I, I, he's, yeah, no, he's not at that level when we want him to play. He needs to play. So yeah. he can't be going, he's not going to a top six team. He, he, he's got to no. go. I just, but, you he know, doesn't here's come on a- that. I mean, it'd be very interesting to see what happens with him. And, and of course, we will uh, be reporting on that when it does. Uh, that's the whole idea, the state of play. You know, we don't really know what day it's going to come out. Something happens, boom, we're there. That's what we do. Uh, right, we're going to wrap it up, Martin. Um, before we go, actually, today, uh, the FAI were in Doyle Aaron. Now, the last time they were in Doyle Aaron, well, well, one of the notable last times, obviously, I think was around... 2019 and you know subsequent events from that um we won't talk about that today as such but um in Doyle Airman th- did he have the cap out bacon bowl out you, you you were reading up a little bit on this weren't you yeah this is basically going to the Doyle Aaron and just putting their case forward a kind of a motion for more funding um there'll be a lot more to kind of come out about this and and how it'll work because they're they're asking for money basically um and and everyone's stating their case fans mm politicians who are pro football, I suppose, are just stating the case of, you know, the GAA gets so much funding, greyhound racing, horse racing. The FAI wants some more of that money. So they've got to kind of show how important football is to the local community and, and Ireland as a nation. So that was all happening today. Some great stuff. Eddie O'Mahony from Friend of the Show. Oh, yeah. Ireland Soccer Shirts was there. Niall Quinn was there as well with different politicians. So, yeah, fantastic to see. But, yeah, I think the fallout from it, you know, there's other things occupying uh, the Oroctus at the moment and Dolaren, of course. Um, and 
yeah, on the I, I thought it was quite interesting actually, wasn't it? Um, RTE are in the news, Dave, especially on the back of our this week, back in the day last week. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> it hasn't been a good, uh, hasn't really been a um, a good week for national broadcasters either side of the IRC, uh, to be fair. Yeah, RTE, Ryan Turbley, good on you. <laughs> Never liked that man, to be fair. Um, no, I, I must say about. The FAI, I do. I, I was a bit facetious at the beginning of the topic about the FAI with the L bag and ball out, but you know what? I think they're right, they're absolutely right. Uh, Ireland uh, football soccer, um, has been underfunded in the Republic of Ireland for a number of years, and that is down to yes, the JA a little bit, it is also down to poor leadership within the FAI and also poor governorship from the powers that be in the Irish government. Um, but most of it has to go to the powers that be in the FAI because they're the ones that should be making the case. I remember even Al Quinn coming in when he was, um, what was he, like vice president or something? They just kind of made up a role just to get his input. And he said, look, clubs should be going for tax breaks from the government, League of Ireland clubs, little things like that. And, you know, you, you could just imagine people in the FAI at the time going, God, tax breaks, brilliant idea, you know basic stuff yeah. like that that's been the dearth of leadership within an organization over the last few years and hopefully now obviously they've had a word they've they've basically put a price on it and uh, a, a, f- a definite amount we need a billion quid please thank you very much they're never going to get a billion quid but you know the higher uh you raise uh the begging bowl i suppose the more you'll get in it um so, yeah, I do applaud them, and they are right to do it. The government, you know, there are massive, massive benefits if we get this right. But, listen, uh, we'll talk a bit more about that one, I'm sure, uh, when we know a little bit more about it. But we are going to wrap this up. Funky music time. Um, right, we're going to leave it there. Uh, thank you very much for listening. This, this was a State of Play. And if you liked what you heard, you can head over to Facebook, you can head over to Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and you can also head over to the website, thegreenmachinepodcast.com, thegreenmachinepodcast.com for this episode and all of our episodes over there. We will be coming back live on the weekend, the 6th of August. What day does that, Mark? What's that fall on? Is it the 6th of August? (laughs) Yes, (laughs) Sunday the 6th of August. Sunday the 6th of August, there you go. I did say to Martin, listen, the music, you know, what's it? the music is sacrosanct, you do not talk, and I've just brought him in there. Listen, thank you so much for listening, and we'll catch you on the next one. 